Hey and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we'll be taking a look at this Nokia N96 prototype from around early 2008. This device is a late development stage prototype or a network tester as I'd like to call it and has a few software differences from the final model. It is quite rare when compared to other models of Nokia prototypes and is in full working condition. And in this video, we'll be going over all the details on this phone, such as its display, its software, its hardware, etc, etc, in a form of retro style review. So this is the Nokia N96 prototype here in 2023. But of course, as usual, before we jump right into this video, don't forget to smash that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, if you have any questions or comments regarding the Nokia N96 or anything else, uh, don't forget to leave a question or comment down in the comment section below and we can uh, start a discussion or I can answer your questions. My social media is linked down in the description below, which includes Instagram, Discord and Twitter and now let's jump right into this video so as always let us uh, first start off with the uh, history on the device and uh, the history on this specific device as well now this thing being a prototype it's not a early or mid development stage prototype this is a late development stage prototype this is actually sort of a network tester of the sorts however it does have a few software things that I want to mention and I'll show you the prototype stuff uh, that's written at the back. Here's a, uh, here's a bit of video on uh, what's written at the back there and I'll show you uh, it at the end again as well. But uh, let's just go over the history on the general Nokia N96 to start things off. So the N96 is of course a phone from 2008 and it is directly, this, it's the basically the direct successor to the legendary Nokia N95 and also the Nokia N82. And uh, this thing's successor was eventually the N97 and the N86. So the predecessor of this phone is the N82 and the N95 and of course the N95 8 gig. And the successor to this phone is the Nokia N86 and the Nokia N97. This thing was uh, released in 2008 and um, right off the bat, it wasn't as well received as the original N95 because um, its battery life wasn't even as close to as the N95 and the N95 8 gig. It had a few similarities as well, but um, also a few things that were taken off. Its CPU was clocked at a lower clock speed than the N95 8 gig as well. And um, the main issue that plagued this phone was it was delayed. And um, it was supposed to be released a bit earlier in 2008, but it was uh, delayed until October of 2008. And it didn't sell even as close to what the N95 and N95 8 gig sold as. So it didn't sell all too well when compared to its predecessors. And um, sort of the, N the N85, the other one, um, it's sort of predecessor, if you may. And also the N85, which was a phone that was also released around the same time, I think that was 2008 August. Uh, the N85 was considerably cheaper than the N96, but it provided almost identically, uh, it provided almost identical features for a lower price. Sure, this thing had a slightly better battery life and more features. However, when you were paying a considerably bigger price, when you compare the N85 actually was a very uh, attractive deal. So a lot of people criticized the N96 for that reason. However, it still did sell reasonably, reasonably well. It's just when compared to its predecessors, the N95 and N95 8 gig, uh, it didn't sell all too well. Um, so the N96, like I said, it really, it began shipping in around September of 2008, um, but was widely available in October because it was delayed and uh, was sold in Europe, the Middle East, Asia Pacific, etc, etc. And uh, the American and Chinese versions of the phone was 
they came a bit later and this thing retailed for about $900 in the United States which was a really really high price at the time even today $900 for a phone is quite a lot and at the time if you account for inflation and all that stuff that would have been quite an eye-opener uh, for someone looking for a phone at the time but then this was Nokia's N series so these things were expensive and um, yeah these were sold at Nokia flagships uh, flagship stores and um, these were well, yeah, I think ex exclusively, as I remember, at Nokia flagship stores for a certain amount of time, but later they were moved uh, to other stores as well uh, so that uh, people could buy them e uh, elsewhere as well. But for some time, these were only sold at Nokia flagship stores exclusively. So that was just a bit of history rundown on the N96 and where it stood between uh, its successors and uh, its predecessors and its other related phones as well, like the N85, like I mentioned. Um, not a sparkly history. I mean, it didn't bring to the table anything sparkly or anything revolutionary new. Uh, it was a good phone overall, but it, like I said, it did have its flaws when compared to the previous models. And we'll talk about all the hardware specs in the hardware section of this video. But yeah, it was an all round a decent phone, but they could have done a bit better with this device. Uh, as like I mentioned, some things were taken off when compared to the N95 and the N85 provided a better value for money at the same time. So yeah, that was just a bit of history on the Nokia N96. Now, a bit of history on this particular device. It was actually a subscriber that suggested this phone to me. I kind of saw it once, but uh, it wasn't mentioned as a prototype. It was just mentioned as a standard N96. Maybe the seller didn't really look into the battery bay to see the, the prototype stickers, but a subscriber, one of my more active subscribers, uh, a very active member of my uh, Discord server, he linked it to me and said, this thing is actually a prototype. And that's how I actually bought this thing. Um, it, actually, it was on eBay for a while, actually. Uh, surprisingly, no one really saw that sticker. And it was about $40, some, something like that. I got it for around, yeah, something like that. But it was 45 and then, it was 45 and then I think the seller um, offered it to me for like 37 or something like that, so I bought it. So it was really cheap when compared to uh, some of the other prototypes that I bought. And you don't see N96 prototypes very often. You usually see other models. N-series prototypes, not too often, but um, yeah, definitely uh, happy that I got my hands on this thing. It's in really good shape, excellent condition, and um, it, it works perfectly as well. Uh, the software is in a late development stage, and most of it is finalized before release. So this thing was probably from around early 2008, maybe uh, January, February, March, April, that year, that kind of area before the late release in uh, late October 2008. So definitely used for network testing and final software testing. So that is basically this particular phone's history. So now let us talk about the design of this phone and this is easily one of my most favorite Nokia N-series devices in terms of design. And like its predecessor, it is a dual slider so you can uh, slide the music controls or media controls down like that just like the N95. It is a dual slider and the sliding action is really satisfying. Let me bring it closer. As you can hear, uh, the sliding action is very, very satisfying. And uh, as you can see, the front of the phone is really, really sleek and nice. It's very minimalist. Uh, the buttons only light up when you're using them. For example, you bring this down like that. As you can see, the buttons light it up there. And um, it looks very, very nice in my opinion. So now let's have a quick go around of the uh, device itself and they'll go as, um, we'll explain everything as we go. So uh, at the front of the device, as you can see, like I already showed you, when you slide it down, we have our controls there and we have this, uh, the uh, fast forward button, play pause button over there. We have stop, we have uh, fast backwards or backwards basically in 96 branding. Then we have a speaker, we have the front facing camera, slide that down. Then we have 
the display we'll talk about that in a bit nokia branding and we have the main buttons over here the phone can be used almost fully with only these buttons but then we can slide it out and then we have these buttons here as well moving on to the side of the device we have uh, a speaker over here so dual stereo speaker so two speakers on this side of the device on the right side of the device volume up and down we have our camera shutter button so it's half press to focus full press to take a photo so moving on to the bottom of the device as you can see we have a micro usb port over here here you can also charge it via micro usb we have a, a cutout for the microphone down here and the three point uh, sorry the uh barrel charger sorry that we almost said 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that's up there uh that's actually the slimmer style barrel charger and uh, micro uh, microphone cutout over there then here we have a lanyard strap uh, place to basically put your lanyard strap put it around, put it around your hand or put it around your neck and then on this side we have the uh, micro sd expansion slot flap over there you can open that and put your micro sd expansion um and then up here we have the lock button so you can lock or unlock the phone with that it's a slider 3.5 millimeter headphone jack over here and we have the power button there as well and i already spoke about the two speakers they're curved on the edges like that two stereo speakers moving on to the back of the device nokia n series and then the dual led flash carl zeiss lens uh, five megapixel camera and this thing also has a kickstand around the camera like that so you can stand the phone up for multimedia when this is open it looks like that and when is it when it's open like this it looks like that as well so in terms of build quality this phone again it's plastic but it is a definite it's definitely a well-built plastic phone of course this was an n-series device so which was sold for 900 dollars in the us so it better be well built it definitely feels solid in the hand like i already showed you the sliding mechanism is very satisfying it feels solid in the hand you can move it up and down with just your thumb like that and um, overall a very solidly built phone it is definitely a towards the tougher side of things it's of course not as tough as a 3310 but can definitely take a drop or two it is a very very well built phone feels great in the hand overall your run of the mill n series device very very well built feels really good in the hand and a de definite premium device from the nokia n series so let us now talk about the display on this thing and just keep in mind like i said earlier everything hardware wise on this phone versus the release model are exactly the same this is just a software or network tester so the display on this thing is a tft lcd display however though being tft it, it has 16 million colors so just like the nokia n95 uh, previously the uh, the predecessor to this phone the n95 also had a tft display however it had 16 million colors so it had the entire color complement well actually there are for, there are some displays now here in 2023 that actually have more than 16 million colors i don't know if they're on any phones but i think there was some technology new displays with more than 16 million colors but the standard for a very long time was 16 million colors which was the full color complement and this thing is a tft display with 16 million colors it is 2.8 inches diagonally like that so 2.8 inches and it has a resolution of 240 by 320 pixels so 240 by 320 like that and a 4 by 3 aspect ratio with a pixel density of about 143 pixels per inch and as you can see it's a very very vivid and nice display this was easily one of the biggest selling points on this phone its display its display is really really nice it's really bright as well when i took it outside to take the outdoor photos uh it was really really nice and really really bright so uh th this is actually medium brightness it can actually go much brighter and uh when i was outside it was on medium brightness as well and it worked perfectly so really bright display and uh the colors and stuff are also quite accurate Oh, I have to retake this picture. That didn't come out that well. I'll retake that. <laughs> good. It's good that I spotted that. But yeah, um, that's because phones of this age, sometimes they mess up. I mean, this, this phone is over 10 years old at this point. So what do you expect? But yeah, the display, as you can see, the colors are very nice. They're very accurate. And um, I really enjoyed using this display uh, for the few hours that I did uh, when I was using this phone. A very nice, vivid, bright, and um, honestly, a very usable display. Honestly, in 2023, uh, I'm used to older displays like this because I've used so many older phones, but uh, for someone else, this would be not 
up to par uh, as when compared to modern OLEDs. But for someone who has used older devices, this display is perfectly usable for someone who used to uses vintage phones on the daily um, just to test them out and have fun with them. But overall, a very, very nice display, kind of expected for an N-series high-end device. Okay, so we can now start discussing the hardware specs on this thing. And we can start off with the CPU. And the CPU on this thing is actually this time not a Texas Instruments manufactured CPU. I can confirm it's actually manufactured by STM Electronics, which is a Dutch company. And the CPU uh, or the microprocessor family it comes from is called Nomadic. So Nomadic, which is the family of microprocessors manufactured by STM Electronics, which is a Dutch company. And the processor on this thing, well actually two processors on this thing, because just like the N95 8 gig, it's a dual CPU setup. Um, this thing has a Nomadic dual ARM9 CPU clocked in at 264 megahertz. So two separate 264 megahertz ARM9 CPUs manufactured by STM Electronics or and nomadic if you want to call it that's just basically the family of microprocessors um and there are two separate cpus it's not dual core it's just two main cpus on the same board some call it dual core but it's technically not the same so it's a dual cpu setup just like the nokia n95 8 gig it has 128 megs of ram so 128 megs of uh, ram which is more than enough for the time and internal storage of uh, 16 gigs so it has 16 gigs of internal storage and it has a micro sd expansion slot like i showed you earlier with 16 gigs at max at launch but as time went by, they kept on increasing it via software updates. So uh, around 2009, this got up to 32 gigs of max available upgradability. And as of 2011, which was around where the final update came, it was upgraded to 64 gigs of expandable storage. So that was quite nice. It started off at 16 gigs on launch in 2008. Then in 2009, it was up to 32 gigs. And then finally was actually upgradable to 64 gigs in 2011 so you could keep increasing the memory as you went uh, with future updates so that was quite nice so overall a pretty decent uh, hardware setup for the time now here are some things that uh, like i said this thing had a bit of criticism on it for being a bit less better i'd say than the n95 8 gig because it lost a few things that the N95 8 gig actually had going for it because the N95 8 gig was an improved version of the N95. And uh, I'm going to list a few things that this phone actually lacked when compared to the N95 8 gig. The first thing was the free sat nav service, uh, which the 8 gig had, the N95 8 gig had, but this you could act you actually had to pay for it. Um, it also lost support for Nokia Music headsets, um, that is the HS45 and 85. Um, and the CPU thing on this phone, oh, okay, so now this is where things get complicated. The N95 8 gig has a dual CPU setup as well, but that was an ARM11 332 megahertz uh, CPU setup. While this thing also still has dual CPUs, however, it's an ARM9 CPU setup with 264 megahertz. But it also does not have floating point instructions, but the N95 8 gig actually had floating point instructions. So, like, sort of a bit of a downgrade there. But um, software wise, this thing was improved, so that sort of made up for it. But some people had a bit of criticism for that. It also doesn't have a hardware 3D graphics accelerator. It's all software based now. Uh, no infrared port like the uh, N95 8 gig and the N95 and the, this is more of the N95 rather than the N95 8 gig. The N95 had the lens cover and the shutter like thing. This thing does not have it, but okay. Some people did not like that shutter or lens cover on the N95 because it used to break sometimes. So that's a bit selective. Um, and it does have a few other things that the N95 and the N95 8 gig had while uh, this thing, it was actually taken from it. But of course it, uh, it had improvements over the N95 and the N95 8 gig, and there are tons of improvements. And honestly, the processor differences and stuff don't really show that much, but still people found uh, something to critique on this phone. But those were some of the differences. Uh, the improvements, you can go and read them online. There's a lot of improvements, of course. But for a phone like this, this CPU setup and this hardware setup in general is more than enough. All right, so now let us jump into the OS itself. And this is very familiar if 
of course you are a uh, regular on this channel this is good old symbian so the symbian version on this is actually symbian os 9.3 s60 third edition with the feature pack number two so s60 third edition feature pack number two or very simply put s60 third edition or s63.2 edition that's what some people call it the point two as in the feature pack uh, overall symbian os 9.3 let's actually do store hash zero 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 hash that should there we go software version date so it's up to 2009 so if i put a 64 gigs in there it's not gonna recognize yet because this has to be upgraded to the 2011 version the final update but as you can see uh, the software version update uh, the software version and stuff is all up there uh, it's 2009 so that is just the software running on this thing now the interface of course your good old symbian this is your customizable main home screen all of these icons can be changed or the home screen layout can be customized um, you press this button to go into menu there's your good old symbian main menu contacts messaging maps music photos video center this changes uh, this changes over time but it is what it is you can change menu view as well to a list or a grid shape or a horseshoe or v shape here's v for an example it, now it goes like that then you can switch to uh horseshoe which goes sort of in a circle ish um there you go Oop. there you go so it goes in a circle and then finally you can also do a list but there are some versions you could modify the os to actually have different different uh custom menu views as well but these are the ones you get off uh the box just like that but i like to keep it on the good old grid now speaking of of course because this is a prototype there's Thing, there's this thing here called drjuka.com when you go into it it's just some bunch of downloads with weird files and stuff um it's just sort of like a image folder from a pc most of these things are empty there's nothing in here but then as you can see dev logo dev icon if you click these nothing sometimes they work sometimes they don't there you go Let's do that again. Dev logo fill S60. So yeah, definitely prototype developmental stuff, unable to open image. So this is all the dev stuff that the old previous owner has been using. He's actually used this phone because there are photos of him and his dog and his house and all that stuff in the photo uh, album. I'm not going to show you those, of course, to protect his privacy, but um, whoever he was, was definitely using this phone as his main phone as well and it does not show prototype on the outside it only says prototype on the inside with a, a canadian phone number that says contact this number if lost you've already probably seen it here's the back of the uh, sticker again uh, there you go so um, it was definitely used for prototype testing in canada for a canadian network most likely but these are all the dev stuff that have been used on this phone uh, by whoever was in Canada actually uh, testing this phone out for whatever wireless career that was. So here's all of that stuff. Uh, we could it, it we could go on for hours on all this stuff. It's just developmental stuff under this folder called drjuka.com. I looked that up and there's nothing really under that domain name, but whatever. So under tools and stuff, you get all this stuff things and blah 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 the usual stuff another prototype ish sign that this thing is a prototype i can actually show you under themes this thing actually because this phone came in a bruce lee version if i find a copyright free image i'll put it up here but there was a special edition of the n96 called the bruce lee edition it came with a bruce lee action figure and a staff like thing a fighting staff and all that stuff and um it came with a picture of Bruce Lee at the back, I think. If I find a photo, a, la a copyright free photo, I'll put it up here, but you can Google it. Nokia N96 Bruce Lee edition. And it had a custom yellow theme. And this thing has that theme. Let me show you theme, uh, menu view or general. Let's go to, there we go. N96 special edition. You see these underscores? They'd never put that in a final model. This is how the themes are usually, N series, N, N series three. These are how usually the themes are. So they'd never put an underscore in a final release. So that theme is actually the yellow theme that came with the Bruce Lee edition. And it works, as you can see, when you click it, um, well, as far as I can tell, this is what came with the Bruce Lee. It doesn't say Bruce Lee or anything like that, but 
it turns yellow and you can see it like that. So uh, it's got this flower pattern like thing as well at the back and all the icons are now, the, the backgrounds of the icons or the selection thing is now yellow. So that's just a bit of uh, prototype-esque stuff that uh, is on this phone, this Dr. Juka thing. And there's probably most stuff when you plug this thing in to like one of Nokia's testing softwares, but it is what it is. But as far as everything else goes, this is a simple uh, Symbian setup here, nothing too much. This thing is already most likely ready to go to the market, to the market but there's still developing things, so it is what it is. Nokia Stowe, very similar icon to the N9's icon if you late, a few years later on uh, Mego Harmaton, there you go. So that's also something I noticed and you have some email setup stuff over here probably what the developer was using, but I don't need to show you this entire OS. You've probably already seen this. You're probably uh, in the know about all these things, but yeah, that's just the OS and uh, what it's like inside this Nokia N96. It's gonna be a bit different, of course, in the final release model, but then again, this is a prototype. And of course, I can't show you any gaming demo this time because there are no games loaded onto this thing. I can load games, but it's quite, quite a pain in the butt because of the signature issues and stuff when you go to copy or sideload games off a computer. But yeah, that's just the general OS on this N96 prototype. Now let us discuss the camera on this thing and the camera was definitely an improvement over the N95 8GB and the N95 which were already really really good cameras at the time. But this was definitely an improvement, of course they had to improve it uh, for it to sell. The camera on this thing, as you can see, is a 5 megapixel autofocus camera with a Carl Zeiss uh, lens. So all the lens and all the general optics on the inside is Carl Zeiss, uh, designed by Carl Zeiss or uh, developed with, uh, in conjunction with Carl Zeiss. Carl Zeiss optics and it has a dual LED flash setup as you can see there, dual LED flash. It can also record video at 480p at 30 fps as well. It has a front-facing camera over there, as you can see, and the front-facing camera is a simple VGA camera used for video calling and if you want at the time to take a selfie as well. So now let's go into the camera interface. This is your good old Symbian camera interface. You already know this, the general quick settings over there. You have options, hide icons, use secondary camera settings, blah, 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 blah. You can go into that, mess with settings, image sizes, the general stuff. And something annoying that I really hated and older Nokia still have this is the flash mode. You hit off and then you exit the camera app. When you go back into the camera app, the flash is on by, the flash is on automatic by default again. So that was kind of annoying, but yeah, you can switch to the front camera as well. As you can see the front, whoop, where is that? Oh no, that was, sorry, that was video mode. Now we're in video mode, front camera. Uh, there we go, secondary camera. So it's slow, there we go. That's the front camera working perfectly there. And now let me go ahead and show you all the images and videos I took from this thing's uh, rear camera during the day, followed by video as well. And we'll do some samples from the front camera as well, which is uh, stills and, and video as well. So let's jump into the photo samples pro from the Nokia N96 prototype. And it being a prototype, don't expect it to be different. The camera stuff was already sorted out by the time this phone was uh, being tested, so it was good to go. So here are the photo samples from this phone.
All right, so as you saw with those photo samples, this thing actually takes some really, really nice photos. And you may have noticed that uh, since I moved apartments, uh, the photo samples are from a different area now, because that's my uh, general surrounding area. Well, actually a bit further than, but further than that. But um, yeah, that's basically uh, the new photo set, uh, but I'll try and improve on that as time goes by. When, once I get to know the area a bit better, maybe there'll be a bit more things to photograph and use them in camera samples. But for now, that'll be the lot. But as you saw, those photos were actually really, really nice. The video, 480p, 30 FPS, it was okay. And the front facing camera, it's a simple VGA camera, nothing major to see there. But the rear, the rear stills are actually really, really nice. So now let's actually test the dual stereo speakers on this thing. And they're actually really, really loud and really, really clear. So let's actually go into tools there, uh, go to profiles, and we'll do a separate ringtones video. So definitely hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for that ringtones video. We'll cover all the ringtones in that video, but in this video, we're just going over a few ringtones. So definitely stay tuned for the full ringtones video. Uh, let's put this on max. Uh, unlike my previous apartment, I can't really play that much loud music anymore, but let's just see what happens. Um, let's put it on max, opening a bit slow. Like, an, like I said, there's a lot of stuff loaded onto this phone. There's a ton of music on this phone as well. The previous owner, the developer who, who actually used this as his main phone. So there's a ton of music on this thing as well. So uh, Optimus. It's actually, let's kill the uh, vibrate because that is going to ruin everything. Vibrating alert off. Um, now let's go back uh, to that ringtone. There we go. Where's the Nokia? Where is the, oh, there's all the music for, from what this uh, previous owner had loaded on this phone. There's a ton of music. Where's the Nokia? There we go. Try that again. So as you can hear, the speakers on this thing are really, really loud and really, really clear. I can't play them for too long because this new apartment doesn't allow too much noise, but as you can hear, they're really, really loud and really, really, really clear. It's what you can expect from an N-series device that's focused on multimedia to have really loud stereo speakers, which is of course expected. And they're really, really nice. We'll do that. Uh, we'll, we'll do all the ringtones in the full uh, ringtones video, which I'll upload in a few weeks. But for now, that's the speaker demo. Now, in terms of extra features or additional features, this thing being a N90, uh, an N-series device, was loaded to the brim with extra features. Of course, it's an N-series high-end device that cost $900 in the US. You best bet it was loaded with the best features of the time. So this thing has an accelerometer. It also has a position sensor, as you can see, a rotational sensor, um, definitely for orientation and stuff like that. It could actually use the accelerometer for that, but some phones have a dedicated sensor for that. Um, not all phones at the time had that. You actually had to manually switch or rotate it at the time. So that is what it is. So that's the sensors uh, on this thing. Uh, it has Wi-Fi, so that's good, of course. High-end high device, Wi-Fi 802.11 with UPnP technology. It has Bluetooth 2.0 with A2DP. It has GPS. Uh, it also has a GPS and and it's supported by Nokia Maps, stereo FM radio with RDS and USB 2.0 with charging as well. It has a TV out, it has organizer, push to talk, voice dial, memo, document viewer built in, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, etc, etc. Of course, a web browser 2.0, DVB Edge, TV broadcaster. It has a receiver as well, so you can technically watch TV on this thing, uh, broadcast receiver, and uh, a multiple array of stuff that it could be played, uh, MP3, MP4, blah, 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 with real player built in. So that's just a surface 
selection of the software features it has hardware features of course like i showed you earlier it's a dual slider with the multimedia buttons over here just amazing for listening to music and watching movies and stuff on the go like this. You can use this with your thumb. Amazing usability there. And of course, it has a kickstand as well. So you can keep it down on the table like that. Do that. You can pull that down and just keep it on the table like that and just do your thing. These phones were designed for multimedia use and of course, uh, ease of use and just to please uh, the, um, the consumer uh, who is heavily focused on music videos uh, and YouTube, etc., etc. Definitely a media junkie phone for uh, the media junkie at the time. Definitely one of the best. But then again, the iPhone was out at the time, uh, and 3GS was coming soon. All had already been released. The iPhone, sorry, the iPhone 3G, not the iPhone 3GS. The 3GS came in 2009. The iPhone 3G was already out and had a bigger screen, touchscreen interface, and all that stuff. The, spe the speakers on this thing would kill the speakers on the 3G and the camera would, dis there's no comparison between this thing's camera and the 3G camera. This thing's camera destroys the 3G's camera, but 3G had actually a bigger display and was touchscreen. So there was competition, but uh, for the media junkie that loved Nokia, this phone was definitely the phone to buy. So those were just some of the extra features on the Nokia N96. Right, so now let us discuss battery and power, but before we jump right into that, here's another look at the battery bay in this thing. And as you can see, if I bring it closer, uh, you have the sticker over there, and that's where all the, prot the prototype uh, identification stuff is mentioned. So Proto, uh, NP iPhone, uh, <clears throat> NP14, hardware ID, there's the hardware ID over there as well. I covered that up because of that phone number. If found, contact the phone number and it says Canada over there. So that was probably the uh, the Nokia division in Canada, Nokia Corporation, property of Nokia made in China, prototype not for sale, N96-3 RM472. We have a few other stickers over there as well. So here is the battery on this thing, and this is the BL5F battery, which is a 950 milliamp hour battery. Now, the proper numbers for talk time and battery time, I couldn't really get them uh, anywhere online. GSM Arena's test doesn't seem to be too accurate because it says with this battery, it has a standby time of about 220 hours on 2G and 192 hours on 3G, which sounds about right. But then the talk time it mentions is only three hours and 40 minutes on 2G and two hours and 36 minutes minutes on 3G. Now, this test was done many years ago, so it could be wrong, but still, it could be a bit more than that. Maybe about four hours on, actually four and a half hours, maybe even five hours on 2G, and about four hours on th uh, 3G. And um, the music play is mentioned as 14 hours. It's probably a bit more than 14 hours as well. So those numbers, I don't know how accurate they are, but it is what it is. So uh, those are the battery performance numbers for a standard release model. And of course, it's the same for this thing. Let me put the battery back in there and power this thing on again. So that is how the battery cover comes off. Push it up like that. And or you can just do that. Press the power button and this thing powers on, as you can see there. And <clears throat> oh, by the way, this thing also came in three colors, so black, silver, and quartz. This is the black color, as you can see there. And um, of course, I mentioned all the pricing and all that stuff uh, for this thing. But as far as everything else goes, this is the end to this video. There's nothing else I can talk about this phone. I will post uh, the ringtones video, the nostalgic ringtones video to this phone in a future video. If I do find out that uh, this thing actually has different ringtones from the final release model. I'll try and get my hands on the final release model, which has the proper ringtones, and then I will release a video. Because I I, when I saw the ringtones earlier, I noticed that there aren't many. So um, maybe this being a prototype has missing a few ringtones, but definitely stay tuned for the full ringtones video on this thing, which I'll upload in a few weeks by hitting the subscribe button. So as far as this video goes, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you honestly did, don't forget to smash that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button so you're notified whenever I upload a new, new video. My social media is linked down in the description below, which includes Instagram, Discord, and Twitter. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.